I want you to close your eyes and imagine a place. In this place, you are happy, you are safe, and you feel welcome. This place is familiar, and it is where you can find all the things that you love the most, whether it be your family, your friends, items of sentimental value, or just a general sense of comfort. This place may be impermanent, but it's somewhere you feel you can always come back. Now, what is the first word that pops into your head? Love. Relaxed. It's my grandma's backyard. Relaxed. Collision. Vernal Hill. Um, comfortable. Like a, it's like a forest, like a creek. The forest. <laughs> It's kitchen. Of course it's kitchen. That's why I asked to be interviewed in a kitchen, darn it! I guess I would say my house where I grew up. Because that has like a majority of the things you just said. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Okay, I am Lenny Ramirez. Hi, I'm Sophie Gonier. I'm Duncan. Um, I'm Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Maya Ben Salem. Hi, I'm Samudra. Um, I'm Eli. Gregory. Mm -hmm. Eli Gregory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, my name is Shauna. Uh, my name is Emma. Emma Barker. Hi, I'm Olivia Cunes. My name is Kiara. Hi, I'm Simon Smith Foy. My name is Ed. Hello, my name is Julia, I'm 23 years old, and I'm studying in Florence with Global College. And where are you from? I'm originally from Boulder, Colorado. I'm from Illinois. Mm -hmm. I'm from, born in Brooklyn and grew up in New Jersey. I'm from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Santa Rosa, California. It's about an hour and a half north of San Francisco. I'm from San Francisco, California. Mm -hmm. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am from uh, Bay Area, California. I was born in Portland, Maine, and then I moved around the northeastern United States, and eventually I've been um, living in upstate New York for the past seven years now. I live in a town called Greenwood, New Jersey. I'm from upstate New York, like Finger Lakes area. I'm from Long Island, New York. I'm from Bashan Island, Washington. And can you tell me a bit about it? Um, it's for Pennsylvania. It is in Pennsylvania. I'm from Amityville. Um, so I guess like whenever I describe that, it's always like, I live, like, I always ask people if they see an Amityville horror, because that's a film that usually a lot of people know. So they're just like, oh, scary house that people got murdered in. I'm like, yeah, that's the town I live in. Super beautiful. It's right next to San Francisco. It's right next to Napa Valley. It's We've got the redwoods, we're half an hour's drive from the beach, and I can go hiking in my backyard, which has always been one of the things I'm most appreciative of, is the outdoors that are there. Uh, it's very clean, the people are, for the most part, very open-minded and very friendly, and it's just a huge community of people I've grown up with, and I love it. I love it. I love the Bay Area. Some things I love about San Francisco are the parks you can hang out in, the food is incredible, the different neighborhoods. Every neighborhood has its own feel to it, and all my friends live in different neighborhoods, so it's pretty easy to explore the whole city. Um, it's beautiful. In the, uh, it's hard, if you've never been to the Northeast, I know where you're from, Bree, but mm -hmm. if being someone who hasn't been to the Northeast, it's very much a classic Northeastern feel in the sense that there's a lot of um, fields, and there's raspberry orchards, and apple orchards, and there's large, um, large expanses of forests, and rivers, and mountains, and it's very much this kind of um, woodland scenery. I live in a town called um, Carpentersville. It's maybe 30 minutes from the city center of Chicago mm -hmm. and it's like 30 minutes from the rural farmland of northern Illinois. Mm -hmm. 
so it's like sort of suburban but also very like um city-ish depending on which direction you travel to everyone in Rainbow pretty much goes around different lakes uh so the whole town is divided into a lake in the room I look around Cupstall Lake it's probably the best lake I work there um so lots of like so it was fun as a kid like lots of places to bike and swim and uh borders of woods so lots of hiking pretty pretty lots of woods so that's about it. It's pretty boring. It's 15 minutes to the grocery store. Um, I am from Massachusetts, Chelmsford, Massachusetts, which is a small suburb in town, um, like 30 minutes away from Boston. We have um, a strip mall that consists of McDonald's, Burger King, um, uh, Popeyes. <laughs> now there's a Chipotle. That one's new. And. It's where the Ohio River starts. It's where Andy Warhol's from. Heinz Ketchup is from there. Um, Applebee's, Domino's. Carnegie did a lot of stuff there. Our libraries are all Carnegie Library. A tropical fish pet place. <laughs> well, I live in between Seneca Lake and Candigua Lake, but I mostly like live near Canandaigua Lake, mm -hmm. and I don't know, uh, where I live is very like corn fieldy, there's lots of fields and like forests and there's some waterfalls nearby. Um, it's a very small island, there's not many people, um, it's very wooded, you have to take a ferry to get there, pretty much anywhere you drive there's the water, um, it's a super small community, everyone knows everyone, uh, yeah, it's a sweet little place. So um, the town where I'm from, it's kind of like known as a um, suburb to New York City. Um, very liberal, really cute town. Um, it's kind of very um, diverse and I really enjoy going up there. Am I allowed to swear? Okay, when I was young I thought it was boring as fuck. <laughs> right now to me it's a little bit boring when I go home but it's very dear to my heart. <laughs> No, I thought it was just this god-awful place my parents had chosen to raise me in because I was born in San Francisco and they had this gorgeous corner apartment with floor-to-ceiling windows that they sold at the lowest time in the market, like a couple of assholes, to rent in the suburbs an hour and a half north. But as I get older, I'm realizing it's actually a really good place to grow up. I had my friends, and there were parks, and all-night diners, and everything you need. Um, so it was a good place. People call it the Boulder Bubble because it's a little bit, there's definitely, um, it's a place with a lot of privilege, which is a bit of a bummer. It's kind of grown into that. Um, but like very like natural and healthy food and all about um, personal health, which is awesome and like being healthy and fitness and blah blah blah. blah. But it's a little bit disconnected from kind of the reality of the world, and um, I think people sometimes lose track of kind of lose touch of the privilege they have, um, which has definitely been a reason why I'm really grateful to not be living there at the moment. But it's a place I love and it's a part of who I am, and I'm grateful I've grown up there. Um, and there's still great people there, but you know, there's always pros and cons. <laughs> and what's your favorite part about it? Uh, probably the community. It's like you've known everyone since you were like born practically, and um, everyone's like a brother and sister to you. Like all of your friends' parents know you, and they'll like look out for you. And it's it's a it's a very loving place. Honestly, I don't know, so many things. My favorite part is probably just all the memories that I have from there. It's a big source of comfort for me. Um, and especially in high school as I got older and was able to drive. Um, just getting to know the city in a new way and when you hang out with friends. I love how open-minded the people are there. The natural beauty of it, like sometimes it gets like pretty boring, but then like in the evening, like you see like the corn, like the wheat, like swaying in the wind, or like there's a bunch of um, like flowers and 
trees, like, <clears throat> after the a main road. It's just very peaceful-like and everything very tranquil. A lot of, like, greenery, lakes, and animals. Um, I guess, like, I really appreciate, um, I think because it's a suburb of New York City, there's a lot of diversity, there's a lot of different types of people, um, and I think, like, growing up in an environment like that, uh, was really good for me, and not everyone has that opportunity, so I really enjoyed that. Do you think where you're from has influenced who you are as a person, and if so, how? Absolutely. Um, one thing I love about where I grew up is, in general, I think it's changed a little bit, but I think people are pretty laid back and, and loving and kind to each other. Um, it's like a lot of like community and getting people involved. Um, and I think there's like that the stigma or the stereotype like, oh, the West, like super laid back, chill dude. And there's definitely that in, um, in Boulder, which I appreciate a lot. I think it's important to take things with a grain of salt. It turned me into a city kid. I'm going to live in cities for the rest of my life because it's all I wanted. And living in the suburbs showed me that incredibly clearly. Um, my parents are from Central America and like they never fully adapted to the American culture, never learned English. Uh, they never had the opportunity to go to school, so it's just more like they grew up and they still are very stuck onto the like very old traditional like Hispanic ways. So I definitely grew up with some of those like um like yeah, those like lifestyle lifestyle type of way that like they grew up with, so then that's how they were raised, like they taught me the same ways that you know. Uh, but then because of school and like you know, living in America, I also learned this like not American culture, you know, like speaking English, going to school, going to like I don't know, like whole like sleepovers or like parties or like things like that. It's always like a, a little dispute just because like for them it was like it's unheard of. It's just like no, that's not a thing and it's like yeah it's totally a thing and it's like no. <laughs> Do you consider where you're from to be home? No. Um, that changes. So because of the traveling, it kind of makes everywhere home, but it doesn't make everywhere comfortable. And that's the uniqueness of, you know, a, a culture group that you grew up in. What does home taste like? Tastes like, um, I'd say home tastes like my mother's cooking. What does home look like? What does home look like? Um, so I live in a white house. It's kind of long, narrow, it's one little story. Um, lots of big windows in the front, and there's like a Japanese maple tree on the front lawn. What does home smell like? Home um, smells like cheese. <laughs> I really like cheese, okay? It's good. What does home sound like? Mmm. Home sounds like the laughter of the adults on Christmas Eve night after all the kids have gone to bed. And lastly, what does home feel like? <sighs> home feels warm. I feel like it's like seeing like an old friend. Like you don't talk to them as much anymore. You still know like why you're friends. Mm -hmm. But you're also like, you've also like done your own growing while you were away. And has traveling changed your perspective on home? Yeah, definitely. Like, every place that you go kind of has to become home because that's where you are. So then how do you make a home? I don't really like associate home with a house anymore. I associate it more with the environment and the feeling of a place. It's like a steady location at like to me, that's not like home. I guess home is more like where are the people that I want to be with the most time with, and where are the people that I really love and can't wait to see. So I think building a home depends on the people, and that's where you build a home. <laughs> washed upon the water, washed upon the water. Watch me as I jump in. 
I think support and comfort. Why should I bother? Why should I bother making connections, reflections away from the home that I built? Please help me just stay still. Just a lesson in goodbyes. A lesson in goodbyes. A lesson in goodbyes. I don't know if you make it or it's just like becomes. places that I've been to and like all of these memories, good memories that I have there and with these people in these places that like just make it feel so comfortable and warm to think about. <laughs> comfortable because I know some people are really uncomfortable looking into a camera. <laughs> like mm. during the headlights. <laughs> and finally, how do you make a home? Um, you're not meaning a house. It's like, oh, well, you get some wood together and then you're just like. <laughs> I'm not gonna make some stone fences. <laughs> my home is my daughter. <laughs> that happens. It's pretty easy to explain a city and. It's. It's pretty easy. <laughs> oh no, it got off your head again. Okay. Oh crap. <laughs> Doing this all over again. Okay. To answer your question, right? <laughs> yes, I think I consider where I'm from. And I lost the question. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> okay, it was beautiful. No, it was a beautiful I answer. Don't, you, I don't think no one will understand. I'm no! sorry, viewers that are gonna view this. I asked her and I hope she deletes it. God, I hate interviews. <laughs>